OK, uh, so since now we are uh, talking about the flow control and also especially the, the for loop. So I think it is time that we introduce the break point. OK, so the break point is not part of Python. So it is part of the Python editor. So most Python editors, they support uh, break point. So that can allow us to debug or to understand our code, especially for loop or uh, for the other complicated Python code easier. So we can right click the line that to add a break point. So for example, <coughs> in our cloud line, so you can just right click on this line. And also you can see you have the option to add a break point. Uh, on, cloud nine, on cloud nine, you can even add a conditional break point, which I never used. Um, once you added that one and you can enable the debugging mode, okay, and the Python editor will stop at each break point, and from there, you will be see that uh, how it's very like for the loop and how the uh, loop is working. So, what will be the variables, the values of the variables at each time? Okay, so let's see that one in our editor. Okay, uh, so let's say that here uh, we are going to add a break point. So um, let's first remove the step. So here, let's for example, in the line 11, if I right click, you can see I can add this break point. And uh, here you can see there is a icon, a bug icon. So if, if you don't check this bug icon and if you run it, you can see Python will uh, ignore the, the, the break point that you set up here. So however, if we click this bar, and also you can see on the right side, we have this debug window. OK, so the debug window will provide more information that when we are in this debug mode. So now, OK, so I check I added uh, one break point. And also, I enable this um, debug. So if I run it, now you can see this line has been highlighted. So, and the Python editor has stopped here. And in this uh, debug window, so we can see there are a lot of information. For example, we have those variables. So those variables are the default variables that generated by the system. The one we are looking, we are interested is this one, so the variable i, okay. And if you define functions, etc., and and it will be showing up here. Okay. So right now you can see the current value of the i is number one, and you can go ahead and continue. So you can go to the next step. Okay. So now you can see the cursor moved to this for loop, and you can see this step has been executed and one has been printed. And now we are at this step. So we go back to this for loop. And then we run it again. So at this iteration, okay, and we can see the i equals two. And now if I go to next step, <clears throat> you can see number two has been printed out. And now we are, we go back to the previous for loop, okay? And now if we go to next step, we can say i equals three, okay? And now if we go back to the next iteration, i equals four, and the four being printed out. And now you can see when the i equals four, the so range, we reach the uh, the limit of the range. So um, uh, the Python code, the, the Python code is finished. Okay, so that is using breakpoint and also using this uh, debug. And when you are done with those breakpoint, you can right click and also you can remove those breakpoint. Okay, or you can just disable the debugging mode, and uh, you can run the Python the entire Python code. Okay, so actually that's all about today's lecture. And 
you may feel like that now we have less and and less content to deliver and actually so that is because now we are going to a, a, a stage that um, everything become more complicated so we we talked about the basic variables and also flu controls so in this week and also in the following few weeks so we'll go to um, like talk about the while loop define functions and also classes so I try to make those contents as simple as possible and I hope you can understand all the code that on my slide and also all the code on the uh, from our lab okay so um, but I think you will spend more and more time on your side that to understand those content. So we, we use um, a fewer time to deliver those contents to uh, to explain those contents. But I think you will need more time to digest those stuff. OK, so before we finish today's lecture, so uh, now I want to mention that what is algorithm. So algorithm is a mathematical process for resolving a category of problems. So when you define an algorithm, so it, it is not necessarily in Python, so it can be in any other format, but that is a mathematical process that to, de to use to define a specific type of the, pr uh, of the problems. Defining algorithm is very interesting and also it's very challenging. And it's a central part of the computer science. OK, so we are not going to be a programmer because we are not in the major of computer science. But this is really a cool part that we will learn. We are going to learn some uh, programming. All right, so let's try just try a very simple example here. So let's say that we are going to use a for loop to find out the maximal item uh, in this list. So I just put some random numbers in this number list. OK, so how can you do how can you find out the maximal number in this uh, list by designing your own algorithm? So by designing your own mathematical process. OK. So you do not use the sort function, okay, and also do not use the the sort method, and also do not use a max function, okay. So design your own algorithm with this for loop, okay. So think about this one. So this is probably your first step that you really want to think to resolve a problems by using those mathematical process, and also you know by designing a, a piece of code that computer can follow your instruction to resolve a real world problem. All right, so I hope you think you spend a few uh, minutes that try to design your own solution. So here uh, I'm going to provide my solution. So let's uh, number list equals so here I just type some random numbers. OK, so we have three numbers. OK, so I'm going to use a for loop. So um, the, the way that I'm going to use is I'm going to use a number to compare all the numbers within this list. And every time within that comparison, so I will just keep the bigger number. So for example, I'm going to use a, a number that compare with this one. So if the number is great than this number, I will keep that old number and I will continue with old number to compare with this number. So if that number is great than this number, I will keep that old number. Otherwise, I will keep the new number, the bigger number as um, the maximum number potential max number and I will continue that comparison. So until I reach the end of this list, uh, the maximum number that I kept, the potential maximum number will be the real maximum number. All right. So here, let's see, I have, I just keep a maximum number. So let's say I use that as zero. 
And next, I'm going to use a for loop. So I say for the number in this number list. And I will say if the maximum number is less or equal than the current number, I will assign the current number to the maximum number. OK, I will assign the current number to the maximum number. Otherwise, I will keep the existing maximum number. And finally, so after this for loop, the maximum number will always be that uh, the maximum number. OK, so let's uh, write. <clears throat> And you can see we get this result that is three to one. OK, so that is accurate and correct. Correct. OK, so let's use at a break point and go to this debugging mode. And uh, let's look at uh, how how it worked actually each at each single step. So let's run it. We now, right now we see the maximum number is zero and maximum number is zero. And also uh, we don't have a number yet. So here, let's say we, we are looking for number and also maximal item. Okay, so number is zero and also max, maximum number is zero and also number has not been defined yet. And we have this number list. OK, so let's go to next. So right now we say the number, the current number is uh, 213. That's because that is the first item. And the maximum number is 0. So right now we say if the maximum number is less than the number, we will go to this uh, if uh, block. So let's say that is true. So now we go to this if block. Within this if block, we, we know that the maximum number will equal to the number. So this one will equal to this value. So now if we continue, we can say yes, this one now equals to this one. OK, so now we go to the second round of this loop. So right now in this current round, maximum number is 213. And the number is still 213, but after this within this after this iteration we know that the current number is three two one because that is the second item and now we are comparing that whether or not this one is less than three to one and which is true so we go to this inside of this if block and we are going to assign three to one to this maximal item which is correct. So right now the maximum item is three to one. And now we go to the third iteration of this for loop. And we know that right now the number, the current number is one, two, three. And one, two, three is, uh, is less, is smaller than the maximum item. So we will skip this if statement. Yes, so you, you can see we just skipped this if statement. And now we go back to our our last iteration. So in our last iteration, uh, we can see here uh, the current maximum number is three to one, and the number is three one two. Okay, so that is smaller than maximum number. So we will skip that if statement. And now we are done with this for loop. So we are going to print the maximum item. That is this one. OK. So hopefully that will help you understand this process. And that is a very simple example of this algorithm. However, so if you check the slide and you will see that uh, the slide solution is slightly different from my solution here. So be, 
so here I just give a random number to the maximum number. OK, so will that be any problems by just give the maximum number number zero? OK, so so what if let's say, for example, if we give zero, so what if all the values are negative? OK, so if all the values are negative, then this algorithm will print out zero as a maximal which is not the maximal value in this list. So if we try it, you can say you will not get the, uh, the correct answer. So how, uh, so what is a solution? So my solution is that, so instead of give a random number value to as an initial value for this maximal item. So I would just use the first I will just use the first value in this list as the initial value of this maximal item. And, and I will use this one to compare against all the values within that list. So that can resolve this problem. So now if I run it, you can see it doesn't matter uh, what values that you have here. They always give you the maximal value. So if I now switch that one all to positive, Okay, so you can see they, all, they can also find out the right maximal number.